Nano was the embodiment of goodness and light, a beacon to dispel ignorance through learning. Such is her legacy and story of sheer determination and undaunted spirit that her dream of saving souls in any part of the globe is still being fulfilled every day. Discovering Nano's story has raised millions of people around the world to love, care and to be compassionate to all, especially to the poor. Each one of us molded and nurtured towards unearthing the light within. So we shall all bear the torch of universal education and emancipation. I love exploring epics. You never know what you are going to find. It's almost like it's a treasure hunt. And wow, this even looks like a treasure chest. Person and diary of honor or Mega? It looks so old. Some entries are signed by Nano. Yes, it seems to be interesting. Wow! <laughs> it does look like 1730s. Okay. Dear Diary, I'm very excited to tell you about myself and all the things that happen in my life. The story begins in 1718 at Ballygriffin, County Cork, Ireland. I was christened Honora, but perhaps my family thought Honora was a pretty big name for a baby. So I have been called Nana for as long as I can remember. Isn't that the sweetest name ever? My father, Great Nagel, and mother, and Matthew Nagel, always tell me that I am full of mischief, in spite of being the eldest of seven. Today, I helped Anne with some school lessons. I will tell you a secret. We study in a high school. You can't tell anyone. I heard that the English people do not allow the Irish children to learn. So yes, it is against the law to go to school. One of my friends even stays on watch and tell us if English soldiers will come. I am 30 now, not a child anymore. Father says I cannot continue to go to head school. I will be going to Paris with Anne, my sister, for further studies. I am very excited, but the worst thing is that I cannot tell my friends why I am leaving. Remember the penal law of the 18th century? Dear Diary, I am writing from Paris to you after a long time. I am enjoying my very hectic life. Balls, parties, theater, outings and all the glamour of this life. But someday, back on my way from a splendid ball, I saw paupers mustering around the church door in search of arms. They were a group of wretched looking people huddled in a church doorway and I was taken aback by the contrast between my wealthy privileged life and that of the Paris poor. Oh, my heart ached. It was like God himself was calling me and decided to ready myself to answer the call. Father's death. 1746. Dearest Nano and Anne, it pains me to deliver the sad news with the heaviest heart I write to tell you of your father's sudden death. Your mother desires that you return to Ireland as soon as my arrangements. My sympathy and love, Uncle Joseph. My father is dead, my champion and my defender. I will miss him mountain. Can iron exist without him? After father's death, I have been living with mother and Anne in Dublin. 
I began to visit poor families and the needy. I have started to believe what my father always said. Paris will make Nano a lady, but Ireland will make her a saint. I made up my mind to devote my life in helping the poor. I traveled to Paris and joined a convent here. But now it feels that this religious enclosure is now giving me the access to the needy. I want to help poor and needy Catholic children in Ireland. I want to give them better lives and engage them in education. So I am leaving this convent with the blessing of my superiors and return back to Ireland and live with my brother's family. Dear Diary, I began to plan for the future of the education mission. Now I have founded my own order, the institution of charitable instruction of the sacred heart of Jesus, promising chastity and obedience to God until death. I have been teaching the poor in Ireland and spend my day with them. I visit the sick and the elderly after school. Bringing them comfort brings me joy. I walk early days at night carrying my lamp. From a socialite attending gathering to a lady with the lantern, it's been a transformation that I never anticipated, and yet can't imagine any other. This is still a dream and pace beyond. There was a time, such a time when hearts were hurting. Logging to find some peace of mind, find an open door. I knew a time, such a time when heart kept searching, trying to see through darkness to free a heart without its soul. Who will light the lantern and keep it burning bright? Who will search the darkness where shadows seek the light? Who will find the courage to sing a different song? Who will light the lantern and go? One step beyond. Nano Nagel died from tuberculosis on 26th April 1784. She left a compelling vision of the service to a growing community of presentation sisters. Her final words are emblematic of her timeless legacy and remain a guiding principle for the sisters. Love one another as you have hitherto done. Spend yourself for the poor. If Nano Nagel were alive today, she would definitely be the person to win the Nobel Prize. Before her death, Nano Nagel opened seven schools for the poor children across the Cox City, founded an alms house for the poor women, and most notably, founded the Presentation Order, which continues her education and social inclusion work today. Nano Nagel was declared venerable on 31st October 2013. Shivan said, If I could be of service in saving souls in any part of the globe, I would gladly do all in my power. And she truly did.